Hello there, my name is Heido and welcome to the Pantheon where we're diving into Modern Horizons 2 and well, it's quite the card. It's five colours and it does a bunch of things. It's Gareth One-Eyed. Human Wizard. I don't quite understand why he's not a Cyclops, but there we go. He's one of each colour, so Wooberg, and he's a 5-5. Five five. You can tap him. Choose a card name that hasn't been chosen from among Disenchant, Brain Geyser, Terror, Shivan Dragon, Regrowth, and Black Lotus. Create a copy of that card with a chosen name. You may cast the copy. You still pay its costs. I really don't like this card. I, I think it's a very cool design. And, you know, if it was in Silver Border, I'd be like, oh, yeah, very interesting. But the overall effect of this, I just really despise. When you sit down against this, right, okay, you're quite a new player. What is a disenchant? What does Brain Geyser do? Terror? What does that mean? The, the, I feel that cards, when you read them, you should be able to tell exactly what they're Yes, this is a rewarding, like, in franchise players like me. Like, I know all of these cards. I know what they do. Sadly, I don't own all of them. You know, if I owned a Black Lotus, I'd, uh, I'd probably have more hair. But, to me, it's just a total dud. I, I just... It, it feels like an unfinished card. It feels like that they've got this cool idea and then... Right, okay, you can only use one each. But, well, how are you going to track that? You know, what if six turns have gone past and you're like, oh, have I cast one of them? Have I not? And then there's no payoff. It feels like there should be a payoff. Like after you've activated it six times, you get an emblem where you cast all six each upkeep or something like that to finish it off. It just, it just feels rubbish. I just don't like the card. But let's try and remain positive, shall we? And with that, please do subscribe. I'm going to be making a video like this for every single legendary creature ever printed in Magic. And it's going to take me quite a good amount of time, so come along for the journey. With that said, let's have a look at my top five. And in number five, well, it's Garth One-Eyed. And more specifically, it's the cards that you can cast because it doesn't explain to you on the card what they are. Black Lotus is a zero mana artifact with tap, sacrifice Black Lotus, add three mana of any one color to your mana pool. Arguably, and it's not really an argument, it is the most powerful card ever printed. You could say that maybe um, Ancestral Recall. Is it Ancestral Recall or Ancestral Visions? I can't remember. One blue target player draws three cards. That could be considered the most powerful, but Black Lotus is just absolutely iconic. So being able to play with that in Commander, yes, that is very cool, but... I just, I, I don't know. I just don't like it. Terror, two mana instant, destroyed target, non-artifact, non-black creature. It can't be regenerated. So a nice little removal option, you know. Uh, you can't target black creatures and artifacts, but it hits the majority of things you're going to be playing against. So pretty good. Then we have Disenchant, a lovely catch-all card. Two mana for an instant, destroyed target, artifact, or enchantment. So all three of them can be cast with our commander. But then there's also Shivan Dragon. Six mana for a 5-5 five, five with flying. And he has fire breathing. Red. And he, uh, your dragon gets plus one percent until end of turn. And he's a dragon. Pretty cool. I remember playing with this. Uh, when I very first started playing Magic, you got those little uh, decks. It was like 30 cards. And each was a single color. Mine had Shivan Dragon because I started with red. Then Brain Geyser. Double blue and X. Tiger player draws X cards. Sorcery. Really nice little effect. Can refill your hand, and it's something good to have stapled onto your commander. But if you want an actual version of it, it's really quite expensive. Regrowth. Two mana for a sorcery. Return to card from your graveyard to your hand. Another excellent effect. A great, a great... All of these are cool, and all of the options are really good, but I just feel like playing with it is so cumbersome. It's very hard to, you know, oh, I'm going to cast Regrowth, and so your opponent goes, oh, what's a Regrowth? And you have to sort of fumble around... Unless you have, like, print-offs of all of them. It's just a logistical nightmare. Which brings me on to some actual cards. And in at number four, well, our commander taps. So why don't we use quite a few things that can untap it? There's the elixir. Three mana for an artifact. You may activate abilities of creatures you control as though those creatures had haste. That is one of the big downsides of uh, uh, creatures that have tap abilities. 
the turn they come in, you can't use them. So giving it haste or pseudo haste is very, very good. And you can pay one and tap this artifact to untap target creature. So we're going to be untapping our commander to use another one of his magnificent spells. Then a couple of other things. Vizier of Tumbling Sands. It's got cycling. Three mana for a 1-3. Tap, untap, another target permanent. So you can use this on a land if you're trying to ramp into your commander or ramp into something bigger. But you can also use it on a commander to activate him twice a turn. Cycling for two mana. Ooh, nice. And then when you cycle a uh, Vizier of Tumbling Sands, untap target permanent. So you can untap your commander. Then Minimo School at Water's Edge is a land. And having an ability on a land is just incredibly powerful. It's like having an extra spell. Can play a blue to tap, untap target legendary permanent. So we can untap our commander. And if you decided to run some legendary lands or legendary mana rocks, that could also untap this as well. Then Kiora's Follower, green and a blue, 2-2, two, two, Merfolk, tap, untap, another target permanent. Again, another piece of ramp that we can use. All of the ramp in this deck, I'd really center around tapping because we can use those tap abilities on our commander as well. So it's a nice little double use there. Then Kiora Behemoth Beckoner is three mana for a seven loyalty planeswalker. Minus one, untap a target permanent. And whenever a creature with power four or greater enters the battlefield under your control, draw a card. So our commander is a 5-5, five, 5-mana five, five 5-5, five, five, excellent and limited. And also the Shivan Dragon that it produces is a 5-power creature. So there's a couple of ways that we can draw some cards. Then Mind Over Matter. It is 4 blue, so pretty hard to run in a 5-color deck. But it's an excellent card that you could use in this deck. Enchantment, choose and discard a card. Tap or untap, target artifact, creature or land. So you could use this defensively. Uh, against your opponent's big attacker before it attacks or use it on your own things to untap them and then get a second use of it and if you couple it with temple bell which is a three mana artifact that has tap each player draws a card we can draw out our entire library and force our opponents to do it as well so as long as you have something like uh, an ulamog or one of the aldrazis which shuffles everything back into your library you will never run out of cards because you just discard it and then shuffle it all back in and then your opponents will end up drawing their deck. Which brings me on to number three. And this isn't a particularly serious uh, inclusion, but it's where my sort of head went when I saw this card. There's just so many lines of text. Why don't we play lines of text tribal? Greater Morphling is a eight mana five five shapeshifter. And uh, well, you can see the text box is pretty colossal. Pay two, Greater Morphling gains your choice of Banding, Bushido one, Double Strike, Fear, Flying, First Strike, Haste, Landwalker of your choice, Protection from a Colour of your choice, Provoke, Rampage one, Shadow or Trample until end of turn. Pay two, Greater Morphling becomes the Colours of your choice until end of two. Pay two, Greater Morphling's type becomes the Creature type of your choice until end of turn. Pay two, Greater Morphling Expansion Symbol becomes the symbol of your choice until end of turn. Pay two, Greater Morphling's Artist becomes the Artist of your choice until end of turn. Pay two, Greater Morphling gets plus two, plus minus two, or plus minus two, plus two until end of turn. Pay two, untap Greater Morphling, and it's a five, five. So, if they're going to make the, this card, that in essence, the rules text of this is essentially never ending. It just, the, the six cards stapled onto it. Why don't we just play an entire deck, which is just words. Jaya Ballad, Task Mage. Three mana for a 2-2 two, two. human spell shaper. Pay a red and tap it. Discard a card. Destroy target blue permanent. All of these are really cool, actually, because they uh, refer back to all their versions of other spells. So that is a blue elemental blast. Then two and tap it. Discard a card. Jaya Ballad. Task Mage deals three damage to any target. A creature dealt damage this way can't be regenerated. Uh, this turn, I think that is... Um, I have no idea. I can't remember. And then five and tap a discard a card. Jaya Ballad Task Mage deals six damage to each creature and each player. That is wonderful if you can give a lifelink in some way as you're just going to be dealing tons of damage and you gain loads of life. And I can't remember what the spell that that is based off either. But all three of those are spells. Uh, take my word for it. Then Ascendant Spirit is a single blue for a snow creature spirit. 1-1. One, one, and you can pay two snow mana. It becomes a spirit warrior with base parent of 2-3. Three. three snow mana. If it's a if Ascendant Spirit is a warrior, put a flying counter on it and becomes a spirit warrior angel with base parent of 4-4. Four, four. 
or force no mana. If Ascendant Spirit is an angel, put two 1-1 one, one counters on it and it gains whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player draw a card. Words, 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 lots of words. Then there's Figure of Destiny, one of the... I, I fell in love with this card when I very first uh, started playing Magic. It just does does stuff. It, it, just, it just does some things. And for a single white or a red, it's a 1-1 one, one, and you can pay a white or a red. It gets... It becomes a 2-2 two, two Spirit Kithkin. You can pay three red or three white or a red and two white or two red and a white. And it's if it's a spirit, it becomes a 4-4 four, four Kith, Kithkin Spirit Warrior. I'm not going to even try to go through all of the iterations of red and white. It's six mana. Uh, it, if it's a warrior, it becomes an 8-8 eight, eight Kithkin Spirit Warrior Avatar with Flying and First Strike. So, walls of text. That's my theme for the deck. <laughs> That's uh, sort of the direction I'd go with it. But, a lot of the cards that we're going to be creating with our commander are instants and sorcerers. So, copying them and, you know, things like that can get us a lot of value. So, Swarm Intelligence is a 7 mana enchantment. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, you may copy that spell. You may choose new targets for that copy. So, you could go down the sort of spell slinger route with this deck. Then, Hive Mind, this is a bit of a chaotic one. Six mana for an enchantment. Whenever a player casts an instant or sorcery spell, each other player copies that spell. Each of those players may choose new targets for his or her copy. So using this, you could end up playing like one of the packs, like Pact of Negation or Pact of the Titan, if you want to go into red. And you can give all of those to your opponents. But you can also give everyone a terror. And you know, they can't terror your uh, commander because he's black. So they just end up killing all sorts of things. You disenchant, they just disenchant all over the gaff. Bunch of different fun things. Brain geyser, well, you don't want to give them brain geysers, but well, maybe you do. Maybe you're a nice person. I'm not. Stone Kiln Artisan is a 4 mana 2 2. Dwarf Shaman. Gets plus 1 plus 0 for each artifact you control. And it has Magecraft. So if we're copying and casting a lot of instant sorceries, this is the sort of thing you want. Whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery, create a treasure token. So this keeps the ramp going and treasures tap for a any mana colour. So it re works really well in a 5 colour deck, which, you know, can be very, very mana intensive. Litho 4 Engine is a 4 mana legendary artifact. Can pay 2. This fits into the wall of text sub theme. Pay 2 and tap it. Copy target activated on a triggered ability you control. You may choose new targets for the copy. So we could copy our uh, commander's ability. Pay 3 and tap it. Copy target into our sorcery spell you control. You may choose new targets for the copy. Again, we can copy the instant sorceries we ca uh, commander makes. Pay 4 and tap it. Copy target permanent spell you control. The copy becomes a token. Now, I don't, um, maybe you can copy the Shivan Dragon. I think you should be able to. Yeah, because it's a permanent spell, so I don't see why you couldn't. I don't think it'll work with Doubling Season, but you could copy uh, it with Lithophone Engine. Archmage Emeritus is a 4-mana 2-2 two -two with Magecraft. Whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell, draw a card. Excellent bit of value for, you know, just churning through your deck with your commander. Then couple of uh, my favourite sort of dudes here. Well, Nara Miha is a female, I believe. She's a Master Wizard and she's a 4 mana 3-3 three, three with Flash. When, he enter when she enters the battlefield, copy target in Star Sorcery spell you control. You may choose new targets for the copy. Other wizards you control get plus 1, plus 1. So with this, we can just copy a bunch of things that we cast. You know, it's, it's a nice bit of value. If you want to go down Wizard Tribal, you can. Then dual cast a mage, three mana for a two two with flash. When it's about for a copy target, insult sorcery spell. You choose new targets for that copy. So the fact that you can steal one of your opponent's spells is fantastic with dual cast a mage. Which brings me on to number one, and this is a card which has been a tyrant of my entire life. Dead Eye Navigator. I hated this card for the longest time, but now look at me. I'm recommending it because it's great in this deck. Six mana for a five five spirit with soul bond, which means you pair this creature with another unpaired creature when either enters the battlefield. They remain paired for as long as you control both of them. As long as Dead Eye Navigator is paired with another creature, each of those creatures has pay two, exile this creature, then return it to battlefield under your control. So with our commander, we only get to cast each of those spells once because you know you you put some kind of counter on him. It's not explained on the card. <laughs> Bit of a problem I have with it, but. If our commander leaves the battlefield and then comes back, he's a new iteration 
of the of uh, that card. So you can use all of the cards that you've used before. You can get another Black Lotus and so on and so forth. So with Dead Eye Navigator, we can pay two mana to exile a commander and he comes straight back. If he has haste, we can instantly make ourselves a Black Lotus. So we crack the Black Lotus for three blue, pay two blue, exile him. He comes back in with haste, make another Black Lotus. We then got two blue floating and we can make infinite mana with this loop. And then when we're ready, we can activate uh, a commander when he comes in and bring guys or someone. Double blue and X target player draws X cards. So we can just target our opponent and say, ah, oh, there you go, John, draw 55,000 cards, which, you know, generally kills them. And then we just pay two blue, exile our commander again. He comes back in, brain geyser, the next opponent, and then someone else, and then someone else. It just kills the table. Pretty cool, to be fair. Two card combo, you just uh, need a further and dead eye navigator or a potentially Urukoma's memorial. Just seven mana legendary artifact. Creatures you control have flying, first strike, vigilance, trample, haste, protection from black and red. The protection's really good, you know, if our opponents are running those colours, they might have some removal and we can stop our commander from getting destroyed. And those are my top five cards for the one-eyed man. He's all right. He's sort of cool. I just, I, I, he should have been silver boarded in my opinion. There's just too much to explain to a new player. And like, it's just too much. It, it is. At least that's my opinion. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this, please do like, comment and subscribe and I'll uh, see you soon. Bye.